Hey guys, thanks for checking out another video. My name is Casey Ferris. Today we are talking about editing inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if you've never used DaVinci Resolve before, this is not the thing that you should watch. This is something you should watch if you at least know a little bit about DaVinci Resolve and kind of know how it's laid out and have maybe opened it a few times, that type of thing. But I want to walk you through pretty much just how I edit a project kind of from beginning to end and just uh, show you some tips, some workflow, all of that goodness. So if that sounds like a delicious slice of fun pie, then why don't you bring it onto your plate and we'll eat together. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this editing and I'm going to hit create and boom, here's a clean slate, a new beautiful project for us to work on. Very first thing I'm going to do is set my project settings because if you don't get these right, then it ruins stuff later. So I'm going to go to my settings cog right here. I open it up and I'm going to decide on my frame rate and all of those things. I like to work at 23.976 frames a second. And this one's going to be at 1920 by 1080, 32 bit floating point. Sounds good. Video format, video monitoring. I'm going to do 1080p at 23.976. Looking sick. I'm not going to worry about color management right now, just going to work on that. So I'll hit save. That'll close that thingy. Now here in the media tab, I'm going to bring in the media that I want to actually edit. So I'm going to navigate to my folder with the footage I need to edit. This is a nice sequence shot by my buddy Dan. A little sequence about setting a table. This is a bumper for his church. And it looks pretty nice if I do say so myself. So first thing I'm going to do is select all of my media and bring it into the media pool. And then this thing pops up. Since we already set the project settings, I'm going to hit don't change because I don't want it to mess with any of that. I also happen to know that this was shot with a higher frame rate. So we're going to have to go through and set the attributes to make sure it's coming in at the frame rate that we like. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all of these and right click and say clip attributes. And here under video frame rate, I'm just going to tick this box 23.976 that's what we want and because this is all shot on the same camera and it also doesn't have sync audio this is going to work out great so I'm going to hit OK and now everything comes in at 23.976 which means it should be coming in slow let's see if that's true definitely true so I have all of my media imported I'm going to right click over here and say add bin and I can put my media in my bin called footage. So now we need to make a timeline. The easiest way to do that is just drag one of these clips down to the timeline and it should be nice. And it looks like it's playing back. So there's the first couple tips right there is make sure that your settings are good both in your project as well as in your footage. Next thing I'll mention is that if you have media that Resolve has a hard time playing back, this is a great time to generate optimized media. All you have to do is select all of that, right click on anything and hit generate optimized media and it will take a few minutes and render out nice versions that it can play back super well. This is all ProRes footage, so it plays back really well, and so I don't have to do that on my system. But if you do need to do that, I would advise setting that up before you start editing. Go get some coffee, and uh, then you can come back, and it'll all be ready to play. Play nicely. So now that we have everything set up, we can actually start editing. There's pretty much two main ways that I like to edit. There's the three-point editing, which is pretty much the classic set your in and out and then put it in the timeline. And I'll hit I for in and O for out. And then I can throw this down into the timeline. Another way that I like to do things is just grab all of my media and drag it down into the timeline. Then I can kind of go through and trim it in the timeline like that. Both ways are good. I wouldn't say one way is necessarily faster than the other. It just kind of depends on what you like. But for this demo, I think I'm going to start with the three-point way because we're going to be doing stuff in the timeline later. So we can kind of see both ways. I'm going to start off with my first shot, which I believe would be this one, just an empty table. I'm going to grab an in and an out and throw it down in the timeline. This is probably a good time to point out there's a little button here. This is the linked selection button. And so when you have that linked, you can grab your audio or your video and it will drag them both together. You can also click it to unlink it and just delete one or move one, whatever you need to do. And then there's also the snap. There's also the little magnet here which lets you snap to things. So snap to the playhead, snap to edges of things. I usually leave snapping off unless I'm trying to do something specific and I usually have it linked at the beginning. So I can select this empty space and hit backspace to, to bring it to the beginning of the timeline. 
Now I can move on to my next clip and I'm going to go through and find the part that I want to add. Which looks like it's going to be right here. And I could just drag it to the timeline like this, but if I drag it over here, then I have a bunch of little options here of how I can add it to the timeline. One of my favorites is append at end. So I can click that and it will just add it to the end of the timeline no matter where your playhead is. And if you're going through your clips in order, you can just build your timeline pretty quick like that. So I'm going to go through and do that. And I'm going to go up to the start because I know that's actually the finished shot, mostly in order except for this first shot. And I'll append it end. So now we have a very rough sequence. It starts out with the empty table, then rolling the little runner thing, unrolling that one, putting down the plate and the napkins, tying the silverware, putting down the little pumpkin things and the candles the bowl and it's done. So one thing, this definitely needs to be shorter. And the easiest way to start that obviously is just to cut out some time, make the clips shorter. So I could go through and select the clip and roll it up like that and then ripple delete, but that takes too much time. So what I'm going to do is set my keyboard shortcuts to help me out. So I'm going to open my project settings and I'm going to go down to keyboard mapping. And by default, it says map keyboard to DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to make a new mapping and I'm going to call it casers. I always set just a couple things to start out with and then kind of add more things if I need to later. Under trim, I'm going to go down here to ripple start to playhead and ripple end to playhead. I'm going to double click these and map those to Q and W. Those are pretty much the same thing as ripple trim in Premiere, which I'll show you what those do in just a second. Those are awesome. I'm also going to change my normal edit and trim mode to V and N because I'm used to that from Premiere. And I'm also going to go under Timeline and where it says Split Clip, I'm going to type S. Then I'm going to save all of those. And now that I have my keyboard shortcuts set, I can move a lot faster. First of all, I can split a clip just by hitting S. And I can also trim the end or the beginning off of a clip with Q or W. And so let's find a clip where this is actually going to be useful. And so let's say I want this clip to start here when her hand is flat. Again, I could grab the end of this and roll it here, or I could even switch to trim mode and then roll it back this way and kind of do that fancy thing, which is really cool, but it's a lot easier just to hit Q. And when I do that, it's going to do a couple things. First of all, it's going to split the clip. It's going to select this and it's going to delete it and then it's going to ripple everything down. Same thing is at the end, if I were to cut the end of this off and hit W, right there it's splitting it, selecting everything to the end of the clip, deleting it, and rippling everything down. So it's like two or three steps just in one keystroke. So it definitely goes really fast. So what I'm going to do is go through my edit and tighten everything up just using Q and W and splitting clips with S. And I'm going to cut this right as she's taking her hand away from the bowl and then cut into the next one right as she's taking her hand away from the bowl as some kind of continuous device there. So now I have an edit that's 36 seconds and give us a little more room here and let's see how it looks. All right, so I think the timing and everything in the edit is pretty good. And now I want to fix a couple problems. The first thing is I want to zoom this shot in because I don't like being able to see the light stands and her feet and things like that. So I'm going to open Inspector and just zoom it up a little bit and reposition. That seems like it'll work pretty well. And this is pretty much the same shot as the first shot. And so I'm going to grab this and right click and say copy. Then move to my first clip and right click and say paste attributes. That brings up the paste attributes window. And I'm just going to click 
video attributes and hit apply. If there were things that I didn't want to copy, say filters or whatever, then I could choose to exclude those. But there's nothing else going on, so I'm going to hit video attributes and hit apply, and that looks great. And I pretty much like everything else that's going on, so I think we'll call that a locked edit. From here, I can add music or maybe add titles or whatever else I want to do, but that's pretty much the basic workflow for editing a sequence inside of DaVinci Resolve with a few tips. So hope that was helpful for you guys. Hope you liked it. If you did like it, make sure to let me know by hitting like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And for more tutorials on post-production and DaVinci Resolve, editing, color grading, all of that goodness, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. My name is Casey Ferris. Thanks for watching.